Good morning, Monday the 29th of June and I'm recording a uh, latest vlog which is going to be an end of June roundup. Um, thank you very much for all of your comments, likes, um, it's been great to uh, chat to people on Instagram and Twitter, um, chatting in the comments on the previous YouTube videos about the things that I've posted so far. I think I'm going to try and do a monthly roundup towards the end of the month about things that I've made over the last couple of weeks and then just some aspirations for the month ahead. So this video is going to be my June roundup and then interspersed amongst those we'll have some project specific ones. So I hope you all enjoyed the Mild Mania video and sort of a behind the scenes look about how that was created um, as much as I did filming it and getting used to the, the editing. So what have I been up to? Um, it's kind of been a bit of a a busy month on the whole crafting front and I think I've been very productive um, no doubt due to the coronavirus and the fact that we're all stuck at home but for us crafters what better to stay safe stay at home and get some knitting and crochet done so I've definitely benefited from not being out most evenings and weekends and it's actually been quite nice and and, and quite chilled I've been having a look through my works in progress to kind of talk about what have I been knitting over the last uh, few weeks and we won't really discuss in any great detail the works in progress. According to my track I've got 16 works in progress. Um, there's project bags scattered quite a lot around the flat so we won't go into that in too much detail but of course I'm not working on 16 things I have a bit of cast on itis which I think is quite common for most knitters we kind of reach a point in a project and then think oh I'm just going to start something new so I've got a couple of works in progress to show today for things that I've been working on this month and also things that I'm going to hopefully start next month and of course there's going to be a couple of new cast ons planned for July so watch this space um and I hope you enjoy the next, I have no idea, 15, 20 minutes. I don't think it'll be a particularly long video, but who knows? So let's jump straight in. So starting with some finished projects, um, the first lot I'm not able to show you, which I realised isn't very good for a video, but I've been working on a baby set. Um, some very, very good friends of ours are expecting their first baby um, in August. Um, very excited to meet the new arrival and of course um, they're absolutely knit worthy and as soon as I heard that they were um, expecting mine started worrying about what can I make. So I've made a couple of items. Um, there will be a uh, little bit of a video that I'll record um, this week with those items. I'm hoping to gift them in early August coronavirus dependent they live just outside London so we will see whether we get there to visit them in person or we'll post them but I'll record some footage of that and that will appear as an addendum in the uh, July video so I've made four things which it's worth mentioning now because of course that's four things in June that I can't tell you about but it's activity nonetheless and some of them I'm really excited about so I look forward to showing you that in the video. Two other works in progress that got completed. One I started in May which I'll show you first. This is the Sandrine shawl by the lovely Gail. I'll post a link in the description box below to the pattern and to Gail's Facebook group. So this was designed as a shawl by Gail, I believe for her sister's wedding. Her sister is called Sandrine, hence the name of the Sandrine shawl. And Gail decided this was going to be run because we're all at home with coronavirus as a crochet along um, over on her Facebook page. I wasn't gonna join in initially. I looked in and thought, oh, that's a lovely shawl. I've got plenty of other things to do. And then not being one to miss out on a bandwagon, I saw lots of people choosing wool and talking about getting started. So of course I had to dig some wool and get started. But this is a great project because I knit it all from stash. 
polish my halo. Didn't buy any wool and it was a great stash buster. I used quite a lot of wool, which was brilliant because it made a bit of room. So if I hold up, so this is the Sandrine shawl. It's a triangular shawl that starts here in the center. And then if I can show you, so this is one pattern repeat and then two pattern repeats three and you get the picture so i've used this dark gray which is a hundred percent wool and the light gray is a hundred percent alpaca let me get a bit closer if you can see some of that pattern detail so it's a great project for relatively inexperienced crocheter such as myself I know I make a lot of amigurumi and people tell me if you can make amigurumi, you can crochet anything, but I'm absolutely not a confident crocheter. And I really enjoyed this because as I said, you start small at the center and work your way out. And actually it's really only just four rounds that just keep repeating themselves. You just keep adding more and more, which makes the shawl grow. So it's very good. It'll be a good old little one to keep you warm in the winter. Um, you can, probably wear it closer for me as a more of a bandana style you kind of get the picture i can pull it yeah so that's my sandrine shawl and we'll come on to the sandrine shawl again in works in progress in a little bit but i really enjoyed this and great little stash buster and absolutely the pattern is charted and written i preferred the written pattern because again my crochet skills are still getting, actually they're nowhere near where my knitting skills are. So I enjoyed the written instructions more, but I did try to use the chart as I was going, just to try and familiarize myself once I was um, more confident in the pattern. So first finished object for June. Second finished object for June is the Inflection Shawl by Toft by Kerry Lord. So I tried this because Mark found the pattern in one of the Toft quarterlies we picked up at a yarn show, no idea, many, many years ago. It was inside um, with some Toft wool that um, I saw, bought it. You can never have too much Toft wool. There's always an animal to make. Mark was flicking through the pattern book and said, oh, that's a great shawl, actually. Could you make me one? So I looked at the pattern. No, I can't because I can't do mosaic knitting. I can add it to my list and I can probably learn it. You'll need to buy some wool. Well, I came home from work then a couple of days later and he'd been rifling through my stash, rude, and pulled out some yarn and said, can you just use this? And here we go. So we will polish the halo again because this is also knit from stash and I didn't buy any wool. Um, I'm stealing the polish the halo from the lovely Lynn of the Callan Yarns podcast, who often polishes the halo when knitting things from stash because we're not buying wool we're using wool we have and it's blatantly copying it but i you know i love it this is mosaic knitting so let me try and get a bit of a close-up so here you can see the lovely charted effect the motif here of the the crosses and then it moves into this sort of diagonal pattern and mosaic knitting, it's, it's colour work, so we're changing colour all the time, but actually you're only slipping stitches, so it's kind of, it, it's called easy colour work. And if you see the back, there's no carrying the floats, so there's no long bits of the other colour that you're not using, which is often a challenge for people who've not done a lot of colour work, because you need to make sure that the float between the stitches is long enough, otherwise the wool all puckers up together. So mosaic knitting was great. It took me a little while just to get my head around. Am I on a brown row? Am I on a cream row? Am I slipping or am I knitting? But after a couple of rows, you just get it. And it's a really, really good color work technique. So I'm very happy with this. Starts very simply uh, this end um, with a plain uh, cream increasing up into the, the brown and the cream. And then the shawl continues to increase till you get to the center and then we start the decreases. So again, charted decrease and then just plain brown to the end. So really, really enjoyed. Again, would probably wear as a bandana style, 
Um, but hats off to Mark for A, finding the pattern, and then B, being ballsy enough to go rifling through my stash and finding this. Um, in the pattern book, there is another uh, mosaic shawl, which he likes the look of, although I don't have enough wool in my stash for that. So he needs to go and buy some wool if he wants that knit. Although that one is a scarf and it's actually knit this way. So I think you cast on like 380 stitches and then do the colour work. So I'm not going to be jumping to do that because that's going to be a long time just to do one row. But here we are, you know, it's not very deep. So I'm feeling very pleased with myself. So that's two finished projects to show off, plus the secret finished objects, which I will show another time. So it's been quite a productive um, June. And, and these aren't small projects either. You know, this actually didn't take me that long when I got going. And this, I think this probably only took two weeks just working on it a little bit every night. And yeah, really, really pleased. So they're my finished projects. So let me get those out of the way. It's quite dull and overcast here in Wales today, but it's still quite warm. So I can't sit. I've got long sleeves on because I was a little bit cold, but I can't see with a scarf on. That's just crazy. So that's the end of the finished objects. Um, moving on to works in progress. So things that I've worked on this month that I'm going to continue. So this oh, project bag, um, let me just mention these. I'm sure I've mentioned these before. So this is the little gray girl. Um, the lovely Gemma on Instagram. I'll post the link below. Absolutely not a sponsored video. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that I often rave about Gemma and her bags. They are fantastic. Look, this is the extra large uh, that this jumper is living in and you can get 10 to 12 balls of wool plus a project and have space to zip it up. They're fantastic to just chuck your projects in um, for on the go. So this project lives in this bag and this is the Mountain Mist Jumper by Tin Can Knits. So I've been working on this also in June. I cast this on at the start of the month and this is for my mother. So I had a bit of a compliment. I made her a jumper at Christmas, which she liked. It wasn't my finest work. It was all right. The fit wasn't perfect. It was one of those uh, jumpers all knit flat and then seamed together. It was fine, but as a bit of a perfectionist, I said, let me make you something else because I enjoyed doing that for you. So she came over here, she was looking through pattern books before the lockdown and she saw this. So we've got this mountain mist. So this is a variation on the, the pattern because the mountain mist usually is like an ombre effect. So typically, for example, we would have had cream, then the pinks, and then this would have gone into say a darker pink or a, a gray. So you kind of get this faded effect. Mother, because she loves to be different, um, which is probably where I get it from, only wanted two colours um, in the colour work. So we've got these two lovely pinks um, and then just plain cream. So I've nearly finished. Uh, it's currently on spare needles. Look how cute the pandas are. So that's the uh, little needle ends. So I took this up to my mother's, handed it through the window and said, try this on. So she's tried it on and I've got an inch left to go on the body and then two inches for the ribs. And then that's that done. And then it's just onto Sleeve Island. So I'm hoping later today I will um, take it back off the super long needle, put it back on the small needle that I was using and then I'll get this one finished. I haven't done anything on this in about 10 days since I took it to my mum's. So I'm just like, oh, so much faff. I've got to take it off the needle and I've got to find the extension. They're just excuses that are rubbish. Um, but I've had other things that I would have preferred to knit. So this is going to be one of my main works in progress for July. So I want to get the whole jumper finished. Two sleeves, but we'll see. Obviously, mothers mostly only have short arms. So it's not going to be a long. It's not like knitting a jumper for me. So I'm hoping it won't take me that long. So... Watch this space for July. We should hopefully have that finished. I'm going to put a photo in of my next work in progress for July. This is the Rory cardigan and it's a West Yorkshire spinners pattern. And I didn't look up the designer's name. So I'll pop that in there. Well, there, there, I think. Um, 
This is a cardigan that I wanted to make for myself. It was on one of my sort of nine in nine. When I did a little nine, nine box grid at the start of the year for things that I wanted to make. It's a roll collar and I should have seen in the picture. It's just a very simple cardigan, but it's made with Aran weight wool. So it's going to be nice and chunky. I started the sleeve and I'm up to about here. So I'm just about to shape the top. I thought especially for me, um, I would start with the sleeves because then rather than getting all excited with a new project, doing the fronts, doing the back, and then think, oh, I've got to knit sleeves and it'll just sit in the project bag. I thought if I start with the sleeves, then it's the exciting knitting then and the sleeves are done. So I've nearly finished sleeve one. Um, haven't worked on that since March time. I took that, we went to Krakow at the beginning of March with some friends. So I took that project, that was easy, knitting a sleeve on the plane in the apartment. So I'm gonna dust that off for July and I'm gonna try and get the second sleeve done at least and then maybe start onto the body. And then the third project that I really want to try and make some progress on is my second Sandrine shawl. Because when I realized it was a great stash buster, I've got some fantastic wool which is West Yorkshire Spinners. I think it's called Gems. So this is a lovely uh, sort of pinky purple and gray. I originally bought this wool for Mother's Jumper for Christmas, but couldn't get on with it. Tension was all over the shop. And actually making it as a Sandrine shawl, it's really lovely. So this will probably be gifted to someone, either Mother or Mark's Mother, one of the two. Mum, if you're watching, you could be getting a shawl. Um, then, yeah, so I've done two repeats of this. And we'll see. Oh, no, I've done four repeats. Yeah, because one repeat is each colour change. So I've done four repeats. The other shawl that I did was 11 repeats. So still quite a way to go. But again, it's quite a, a quick project. Because this wool is a little bit finer than the wool I used for my first Sandrine shawl, I think I'm using a three and a half mil hook on this wool, whereas the other Sandrine shawl, I think was done on a four and a half mil hook. So this is lovely. So when it's blocked out, it's gonna really stretch and you can really see the, the lacy effect. So I'm hoping to get a little bit done on that. Might not get it finished in July because there's a few other things I wanna make. Obviously love to get distracted by things, um, but at least if I can put a couple of colors on and kind of keep checking in on that one, that'll be good. And again, great stash buster. So it's wool I had in my stash, bought for a project, didn't like it for that project, wouldn't probably use it for any other jumpers, so a shawl is going to be perfect. So I'm really looking forward to that. That's randomly living in a toff bag um, because it was a bag that I had to stash it in and I didn't have any of Gemma's little grey girl bags left over. All of my bags are Gemma's little grey girls. I'm a bit of a brand whore when it comes to that. So that's the Sandrine shawl. So that's kind of my works in progress. So three things for the month, my mountain mist jumper, my uh, Rory cardigan, and the, th uh, the second Sandrine shawl. So let's see what happens. Um, I have two other projects that I wanna cast on in July though, hence why I may not finish the three things that I've got on the go. So the first one, um, I'm only gonna mention it very, very briefly. It is the unbearable, um, I was going to try and find a photo, but no, I'll put a photo on screen. It is the unbearable hoodie by Max Sear, who is uh, part of the Max and Dell on um, Instagram. Uh, Le Gasson is their brand and they make just, the, the, the designs are brilliant. So there was a call for test knitters and um, I messaged them, said I would be interested in test knitting the hoodie and I was chosen. So I've got the pattern, I've got the wool. I'm not going to go into it too more details. I'll put a photo on so you know what I'm talking about, but there's going to be a separate project video for the unbearable hoodie, um, which I'm very excited about. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say. So I'm going to start that day off today, which is why I'm recording the video now. And once I finish this and then the editing and the like, I'm hoping to start that today. So it's top down, simple raglan top, and then into the color work. So I'm hoping to get the raglan started today. The other project I wanna knit in the month then is the herbivore shawl. So again, picture on screen, ding. 
And that is a Stephen West pattern. We know we've talked a lot in previous videos about my love of Mr. West and his patterns. And I bought this wool when I went to the Unraveled Festival back in February. So we came across this wonderful dyer called Ted. So this is Ted's, uh, Ted Knits UK. And this is the Rusty Birch colorway. So this is a merino nylon mix, 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, and Rusty Birch, it's fantastic. I went to the sh show thinking I want two skeins of wool to make this shawl, the herbivore shawl. And I really want something in grey because I'm starting to get more and more into shawls the more I've been sort of knitting them. Um, but I wanted something that was more universal because a couple of the ones I've got have been quite colourful. Um, not always great for walking to work and, you know, it doesn't always go with everything you're wearing. So I wanted something grey. Saw this. Um, weirdly, Ted recognised me from Instagram, which was great. So we had a little chat. And of course, you know, you build up a rapport with the designer and, you know, it's it's great to be able to support them and buy some fantastic wool. So Ted is an independent dyer. Um, I'll pop the link below to Ted's website. So please feel free, pop along um, and take a look at some of the, the wonderful wool that we've got. So I'm hoping I'm going to cast this on. I've had this since February. I keep saying I'm going to do something for me because I often knit for other people. Um, and I love it. You know, it keeps me busy, especially during lockdown, as I've just said. So I'm hoping to cast on the uh, the herbivore shawl. So watch this space. We'll see. I'm not just going to cast it on for the sake of it. I'll cast it on if I've got some time to spend, you know, at least a week or so working on it. So we'll see. But I'm hoping to get that done. So that will give me sort of five things to work on, which will be, so I've got 16 works in progress at the moment. I'm going to start two new, take me to 18. I'm really going to be working on five. There might be a video at some point of all of the works in progress. One of them is definitely going to be frogged. Uh, for the non-knitters that I know do watch these videos because we've had chats about them, frogging is when you rip it, rip it, rip it, um, and basically unwind it back to a ball or a skein um, and start again. So there's one project that's going to be frogged because it, it's a waste of yarn. Um, there'll be another video for that because I've got a great pattern in mind. And um, yeah, so that's going to take me down. But hey-ho, it's knitting. We'll make a dent. There's a couple of crochet things in there as well, actually, I think. We'll make a dent in at some point. So that's probably all of my activity and then I'm just going to finish up with sort of a stash top up wool that I've bought. There's no halo polish in now, although I have been good so far. So I hope you don't mind a little bit of uh, indulgence. But um, these are um, two lots of yarn that I've bought with actual projects in mind. So it's not as if I'm just randomly buying wool. They're wool for projects. So the first wool that I bought is, oh, it's just so squishy. This is by the awesome La Bien Amy. Have seen Amy's wool. I've loved her Instagram. She lives in Paris. Her shop is in Paris. I haven't been to La Bien Amy. Um, the sister shop, cafe, tea shop to La Bien Amy is called Loise Te, um, which I think is the tea bird. My French isn't the best. I'll put a translation if it's not the T-Bird. I think it's the T-Bird, Loise T. Yeah. Um, we went there on a trip to Paris a few years ago. Bought some wool, obviously. Um, but I wanted to buy some of this La Bien Amy for just ages. And it's so squishy. So this is 100% Merino. Um, this is the Shire colorway. It's not looking quite so green in the camera. It's much more of a sort of an emeraldy. So I've got two skeins of this. And I've got two skeins of the sister yarn that goes with it. So this is mohair silk, which is 70% mohair and 30% silk. Again, in the Shire colorway. So they go together perfectly. And this is going to be a project. Um, I'm not going to say too much more. The person who is going to receive the project might make the connection if they watch the video. Mother. Um... So if mother makes the connection, fantastic. If she doesn't, well, you'll find out when I get to make it. So maybe this will be, I'm going to say maybe this will be cast on in July. It could be cast on sooner. Um, I'm itching to go. This is going to be um, a love note sweater, um, held double. So knit the two of these together. 
I've seen loads of people make them. I showed my mum the, the pattern and she said that she really liked it. And I saw this wool because she asked if she could have it in green. And um, yeah, so I'm really excited to get that. So I've got uh, two skeins of this and two skeins of this. So looking forward to getting that done. And the other acquisition, um, I mentioned Max's patterns for the unbearable hoodie. Um, there's also the for fox sake, say that slowly, uh, sweater, which is just the cutest little fox motif. Again, I'll pop the picture in. A uh, little fox with glasses. Look how cute that is. Um, so I bought some wool to go with this. So the jumper is going to be uh, grey in the body. Um, and then the accents colour, we've got some cream, some blue. So these three colours are West Wool. So this is Stephen West's wool brand. So this is uh, the tandem yarn is the double knit variation. So we've got Pebble, Prince and birch tree um and this is 90 percent merino and 10 percent texel it's so soft and it will give great definition in the color work so i have those three colors but i hear you say the fox has a brown or orange face well of course he does but stephen didn't have a corresponding brown or orange so i've then purchased this color uh, so this is paint by numbers, double knit. This is John Arben textiles. So it's not 100% identical. This is 100% merino. This is 90% merino. But for the purposes of the colour work, the jumper, it will be perfectly fine. The wool is pretty much the same thickness, so the tension will be the same. And just look at those colours working together. So I'm making it for fox sake. Um, I've got the like most fox obsessed foxy friend called Sharon and it's her birthday later in the year um, and she's asked if she could have a fo for fox sake sweater. Um, so of course, who am I to say no? So we've got some fantastic wool as a little sort of birthday present. She watched episode one with my introduction. I don't think she watched episode two, so I think I'm okay. Sharon, if you watch this, spoiler alert, the wool is here. Um, she knows she's having it. She's picked a size of the pattern. We've talked about colours, etc. So that's my second acquisition for the month. But, you know, with all these, yes, it's more wool. I don't think it's going to fit in my stash, though. My stash is quite organised. Everything's in little bags and it's all in boxes. But, yeah, this isn't all going to fit. We won't tell Mark that. I'll work that. I'll put it in a bag under the spare bed or something. Um... So, yeah, that's probably it. So we're coming up to the half hour mark, which for me personally, I think that's a, an about right time for a, a video. So I'm probably going to wrap it up there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed just a bit of a almost behind the scenes what goes on in my knit brain about how I justify my yarn purchases. Hey, the bills have been paid. You know, what else are you going to spend your money on while you're in lockdown? So, yeah, I've had a great month. It's been really enjoyable finishing off some projects, starting and finishing some projects in the same month, picking up my Sandrine shawl I started at the beginning of May, so nice to pick that up and get that finished. I've learned some new techniques with the mosaic knitting. I've gained in confidence in my crochet because of the Sandrine shawl. And I've got some nice plans then for some things that I'm going to knit throughout July. So I think once I'm up and running with the herbivore shawl, it will be one of those ones I can watch while I'm doing, uh, I can work on while I'm watching the telly. Because once I'm in the rhythm of the pattern, it seems quite a straightforward one. So that will be an easy one. The Rory cardigan is going to be quite straightforward. That's just knitting back and forth. So again, that's an easy one while we're watching some sort of Scandi noirs. We love a bit of a, <coughs> um, a TV drama. So subtitles are fine as long as I've got easy knitting. I can't be doing colour work while I'm knitting. Pfft, no way. And I'm hoping to get my mum's jumper finished. So I've got a few different projects. The unbearable hoodie will be the challenge because that's the colour work. Um, I'm on a deadline for that one. So I've got to get that finished by mid-August. So luckily I'm doing the smaller size. So it's not as if I'm one of the test knitters doing the, the adult sizes. So again, feeling good about that. Uh, but that will be my colour work project for the month. So I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully I'll get this video loaded up today. Um, if not, it will be certainly in the next day or so. And yeah, please leave me a comment below. Let me know what you've been working on in June. Let me know what your plans are for July. Um, 
connect, message me on Twitter or Instagram um, if you prefer those mediums rather than YouTube comments. But thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with me. And until next time, happy crafting.